Welcome everybody. We're super excited to have you today. Um, welcome to Meet the Winners, How They Did It. Uh, this is an evening where you're gonna get to know the winners of the 2024 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge for high school students and learn how they wrote their songs. Um, I'm Frankie Daly, my pronouns are he, him, and I am NAMP's new works director. Um, we are so excited to have you uh, and have you joining us this evening. Um, uh, while we begin, I would love actually if we could put into the chat um, uh, or where you're coming in from. Uh, we have a chat function here and I believe you can uh, let each other know uh, where you're joining us. We'd love to see uh, how we put the national in uh, National Alliance for Musical Theater here. Uh, so, oh, National Scotland already, wow. Uh, Beyond Borders already. Uh, keep joining, keep letting us know. Awesome, awesome. Um, I would love uh, to say a hello quickly to all of our participants. Uh, joining us today are obviously uh, friends and family of our winners, but also we have all of the participants uh, who submitted to draft one and draft two of the challenge this year. So hi to all of you out there. Um, also, we have uh, our selection team uh, and our feedback committee. And so uh, those folks are here with us today uh, to get to know the winners a bit more as well. Uh, keep jumping in the chat, folks. We love to see it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over now to NAMP's executive director, Betsy King Militello, uh, to tell us more about the work that we do here. Welcome, Betsy. Hi, it's a pleasure to see you all. Um, I am Betsy King Militello. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm NAMP's executive director. Thank you all for joining us this evening, and thank you to everyone who submitted and to everyone who helped us in so many ways with NAMP's first year working on this exciting and important program. Congratulations to this year's winners. I'm excited for everyone to meet them tonight. I'm amazed by your talent, by your songs, by your passion, and I can't wait to welcome you all to New York City in just a couple of weeks. Some quick background on NAMP for those of you not familiar with us. Our mission is to be a catalyst for musical theater development, production, innovation, and collaboration. We're a member service organization for the musical theater field, and our members include regional theaters, academic institutions, presenters, producers, and students. We strive to strengthen the evolving musical theater ecosystem through a rich portfolio of programs, including our annual festival of new musicals, semi-annual educational conferences, and two granting programs, the Frank Young Fund for New Musicals and the Impact and Exploration Fund. And we're now very excited to extend our writer-centric development efforts through the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge for High School Students, an initiative of the National Endowment for the Arts. To that end, I'm now very pleased to introduce Greg Reiner, Director of Theater and Musical Theater for the NEA, to tell us more about Challenge. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Betsy. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm Greg Reiner, he, him pronouns. I'm the Director of Theater and Musical Theater at the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, it has been so exciting to watch the songwriting challenge evolve this year under NAMS leadership. Um, and we're, we're thrilled to be here with you today. I'll just say a personal note, I just always so inspiring to see um, all of the submissions from students around the country for this program. It gives us hope for the future of Broadway and musical theater in this country. So it's, it's a very exciting moment for all of us. Um, for those of you who don't know the details, the musical theater songwriting challenge for high school students has been around since 2016. Um, part, we had a pilot program that year, and then we partnered with the American Theater Wing, um, and now we're excited to partner with the uh, National Alliance of Musical Theater, or NAMT. Um, the 2023-24 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge kicked off last fall, where students submitted a draft of their songs and received personalized, constructive feedback from industry professionals. Students then had the option to revise their songs before entering their composition for final judging. And overall, more than 100 submissions were received by students from 34 states. A panel of leaders in the musical theater field reviewed the submissions and scored them based on published criteria. And I also wanted to take a moment to say how grateful we are to our partner organizations for this year's Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge, which included which include Concord Theatricals, Disney Theatrical Productions, and the NMPA Songs Foundation. Um, so thank you all so much to these partners. They're the ones who also make this possible in addition to the NEA and NAMT. Uh, so we're very grateful for your partnership. So now I'm going to hand it off to our next uh, our next section here with Sky. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Betsy. 
Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sky Cone Ivy. I use she, a of pronouns, and I am NAMP's New Works, New Works Associate. Um, so I want to talk a little more about the interactive submission process that students experienced as a part of Challenge this year. So the, for, for the first time ever, the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge included a draft one and a draft two submission platform. Students submitted a song in draft one and then received feedback on their song from members of our feedback team. Um, that team included NAMPT members, professional songwriters, theater administrators, and arts educators. The feedback team reviewed the songs with a focus on five different areas of songwriting, tone, character, style, lyrics, and music. Um, and then students resubmitted their songs in draft two. The feedback team then scored those songs, taking into consideration how the feedback was implemented. Um, and we just wanna say a big thank you to the feedback team for your time and dedication to all of the songwriters then, that submitted this year. So thank you. Yes, thank you to the feedback team and the challenge selection committee uh, for all of your work. Um, to tell us more about how the students engaged in this process, um, I am thrilled to introduce to you, uh, introduce to you uh, NAMP's program coordinator, our host for this evening, an all around challenge pro, Amanda Friedman. Let's bring Amanda out. Hi everyone. I'm Amanda Friedman. I use she, her pronouns. I'm NAMP's project coordinator. Uh, and I'm so excited to be hosting this evening as we get to meet all of these amazing students and learn more about their work. Uh, this year, we have provided learning opportunities for challenge participants to expand upon their songwriting skills through online masterclasses, workshops, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. All programs have been facilitated by professional musical theater writers and NAMPT artists, including Rob Rokiki, Gina Phillips, Joe Iconis, David Hine, Andrea Daly, and many others. Uh, we've held programs such as Songwriting 101 and 201, uh, Write Riffs and Rivals, Songwriting for Heroes and Villains, Music Lab, Hooks on Hooks, Lyrics Lab, Exploding the Mundane, and Song Share, where students received one-on-one -on -one feedback to polish off their submissions. We are excited to continue providing educational programming to participants of the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge, starting off with hosting another song share this summer. Stay updated with all challenge happenings at namp.org slash get dash connected. This year, we also launched the Writing is Rewriting Resource Center to provide students with guidance and opportunities for skill building as they approached rewriting their songs for draft two. The Resource Center is still live on NAMP.org slash rewriting, where you can continue to explore learning modules, songwriting tip videos from NAMP alumni writers, and watch recordings of past programs. Awesome. Uh, this year, uh, we received 117 song submissions in draft one and 95 submissions in draft two. And the challenge selection committee chose seven winning songs for the 2024 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge. These uh, eight students who wrote these songs have been invited to New York City uh, for Winner's Weekend. Um, where the students will have onstage, backstage, and offstage experiences. Uh, winning songwriters have been paired with a mentor writer and orchestrator who will help arrange their songs uh, for Challenge Accepted, uh, which is a concert uh, presenting the winning songs on Monday, June 17th uh, at the Irene Diamond stage at the Pershing Square Signature Center here in New York City. Uh, the concert will also be live streamed at namp.org slash challenge and arts.gov slash songwriting. Uh, so mark your calendars, be sure to tune in. Uh, you'll catch these winning songs that you'll hear our previews of today, as well as songs from our mentor writers too, which is pretty exciting. Um, I am, I'm going to keep going. I'm still in the script. Um, we are uh, super excited to introduce the mentor artists who are going to guide our winners throughout this entire process leading up to the winner's weekend and through it. Uh, and so uh, let's talk about our music team. Our music team is led by Challenge Music Supervisor Dylan Glathorn uh, with music director Anessa Marie and orchestrators Teresa Lotz and Jesse J. Sanchez. Uh, thank you so much to our all-star music team who is already hard at work on these songs. Uh, thank you. Uh, the program mentor writers will interview our winning songwriters today uh, about their writing processes. Um, we will even get to hear snippets of those songs, as I mentioned, uh, in draft one and draft two from those submissions. Uh, and I'm thrilled that our mentors uh, this year include Joey Contreras, Timothy Wong, and Zaniva Now. 
Um, we are so thrilled to have you with us. Uh, thank you to our mentors, um, and we're excited to meet you very, very soon. Let's keep going. And finally, introducing the winners of the 2023-2024 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge for High School Students. Talk Pretty by Louisa Paraguasu. What Did Love Do to You by Tabitha Moore. Live Before Life's Gone by Isabella Wynn and Maya Johnson. Space Time by Owen Ye Lee. Overthinking by Ale Fonseca. Little Miss Heard But Not Seen by Sydney Gray. And The Cost by Gwendolyn Dorfler. So let's begin. It's time to meet the winners. Please welcome Tim Huang in conversation with Louisa Paraguasu to talk about her winning song, Talk Pretty. Hi, Louisa. How are you? Hi, Tim. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Can you tell everybody, please, where you attend school and where you're calling in from today? Because I know those two things are a little bit different right now. Yeah, so um, I just graduated from Davidson Day School in Davidson, North Carolina. Um, so I live like in Mooresville, North Carolina, but today I'm calling from Shanghai, China. And next year I'm attending UNC Chapel Hill. What? Okay, so you're in Shanghai right now. What time is it over there? It's um 7 a.m. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so good morning to you. Thank you. Louisa, will you tell us this when you started writing the song? Yeah, of course. Um, so I've been like writing songs for I think as long as I can remember. Um, I think like since the moment I could like write, I've been trying to like write songs. I, I think at first they didn't actually resemble actual songs at all. And they were just sort of like little stories that I'd put melodies to. But um, initially, I think I made up songs to like distract myself when I was bored. But as I grew older, those songs I would write would like help me remember things like I would, you know, write songs to help me memorize times tables or write songs to help me memorize like words for spelling bees and things like that. And um, and I'm super lucky to like have several journals that I kept from when I was really little. And so I think I've been able to see sort of the progression of like when they actually became sort of songs. That is amazing. Will you tell us a little bit about your process? Like, how does it start? Words, music, both? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think songwriting is pretty, like, a pretty spontaneous process for me. I usually start with, like, a phrase, or, like, a melody that I've been thinking about throughout the day. And then whenever I can get to, like, a guitar or a piano, I try to, like, hammer something out that incorporates that melody or that phrase. And, um, but kind of a bad thing about my songwriting process is like as much as I love music I tend to get like bored pretty easily with my own ideas and like even start to dislike them if I work on them too much um so I usually end up trying to like write a whole thing in like one sitting or like you know one session and if I keep coming back to it I'll end up finding like really frustrating like flaws and everything and get stuck in like that loop um so whenever I write music the lyrics and the music start to kind of emerge kind of together usually and I'll usually like record myself improvising something with the chord progression that I like, and then I'll make up the lyrics on the spot. And then later I'll like go back and change the lyrics that I didn't like and, you know, keep the ones that I did and all that stuff. Yeah, right on. Um, so you said a guitar or piano, is that right? Yeah. Which is, would you say you have like a, like a, a more dominant one or are you sort of musically ambidextrous like that? Well, I think I've been like, educated way better and like way more in piano but I definitely prefer guitar nowadays I feel like I'm way more comfortable playing that I think piano like I can play chords like max right now like I think it's it's really I really need to work on piano for sure oh I wanted to ask you about this we talked about this at, at rehearsal um you recently recorded an album is that correct yeah you can you tell me just a little bit about like what's it called and when did it come out and where can I find it yeah, sure. Um, so it's called Sundial, and the artist's name is Luisi. So it's L-U-I-S-I, -S which is just like a nickname that my like English teacher gave me that I liked. And then, um, and you can find it on like every streaming platform, basically. I think so. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So talk to me about Talk Pretty. Um, what like inspired this winning song? Like, where did it start? Uh, just tell me anything. Yeah. Um. So sure. I mean, I think it kind of came up from the idea of like, um, so I'm Brazilian. I grew up, you know, in the United States and in Shanghai, but I was born in Brazil. And so as a Brazilian immigrant, I kind of grew up speaking Portuguese at home. And it's always been the language through which I communicate with my family and everything. 
And um, as I got older, I started to become really grateful for the fact that I could speak Portuguese. Like I started to realize that it really allowed me to like fabricate really strong connections with my family because like without that, I probably wouldn't be able to talk to a lot of my family members. And um, but even though I was raised speaking Portuguese, you know, there are a lot of first generation Latinos in the U.S. and around the world who aren't raised speaking their native language. And um, I think, unfortunately, the judgment that these kids can receive sometimes by their respective communities can be pretty brutal. And um, I, I really find it unfair how these kids might feel like disconnected to their own culture, or shamed for not being able to speak their language, even though they're not any less Latino for not being able to speak whatever language their ancestors spoke. But mm -hmm. um, you sort of have that judgment from the community, which can be, you know, pretty discouraging, I think, even if you want to learn, you kind of have that you know, you don't even feel like you can at that point, which is just really unfortunate, I think. So as much as I am grateful for speaking Portuguese, um, I've come to learn that like the human connection that people have is, it, it kind of has this ability to transcend language barriers. And even though language can definitely facilitate interaction, you don't need to speak the same language to have like a human connection with somebody else. And um, the song is supposed to show how that shame that, um, well, the word that people use in the U.S. a lot is like no sabo, which literally means in Spanish, like does not know, but it's grammatically incorrect. It's like it's a joke upon a joke. So that like no sabo kids can speak, some, can feel sometimes like coupled with that desire to communicate. It can be really challenging. So in the end of this like musical, the main character sort of ends up realizing this truth about human connection that as much as it helps language, mutual language is not always necessary to like have a real relationship with someone else. Right on. I really particularly appreciate this because um, I feel like at this point in your life, your Chinese is probably better than mine. And I'm not going to feel bad about that. I'm going to feel really good about it. Um, I am going to ask you, though, when did you start getting interested in languages? Yeah. Um, so I think I've always sort of liked languages because I thought it was like kind of an eavesdropping tactic, like I could listen to other people and stuff. But um, I sort of realized how cool it was when I moved to Shanghai when I was in sixth grade. I was like 11 years old. And um, I just really loved learning Mandarin. I thought it was like the coolest language in the world. And yeah, I just like devoured everything that I could. I, I loved learning it. So yeah, I okay. think it was around then. All right. So how many languages in total do you actually speak? So I speak Portuguese. Um, I speak English pretty well. And um, I think when I was like 10, I started to learn Spanish. So I think Spanish all right now too. And then I had this goal in the beginning of high school to like learn all the, the main romance languages. So I learned French too later on in high school and then Mandarin and then Italian a bit too. Oh my goodness. I, I don't want to say that I'm like fluent in all of them. Like, please don't have like a conversation oh, with me right now. That's like really <laughs> remarkable. I mean, I, I don't speak that many languages. I think that's pretty remarkable. Um, well, okay, talk to me then. Let's talk about, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little under the weather too. Uh, about the feedback that you got for your song. Um, how did the song change from draft one to draft two? Yeah, um, so the majority of the feedback that I received was sort of, was mostly about like the music itself rather than the lyrics or anything, like the chord progression. And like, I have this tendency to like make things like really simplistic. Like I love like artists like Lizzie McAlpine and like Doty and things like that who are like really kind of like raw, simple stuff. So I kind of try to perpetuate that in my own songs. But um, it kind of, you know, on the other hand, it kind of has this like tendency to be way too simple. So I think that was something that I tried to work on. And um, so in the second draft, I tried to make things a bit more layered and like a bit more complex if I could. So I added other instruments. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of the bulk of it. Like there wasn't too much feedback about the lyrics, so I didn't change too much there. But um, that was mainly it, I think. Right on. So let's uh, listen to some of these changes, shall we? Maybe I should learn bossa nova They say I've got it in my blood Then tell me why I can't speak to you If these words were sculpted for my tongue Got it 
and you tell me why I can't speak to you. If these words were sculpted from my tongue. Okay, so tell me a little bit. I heard in draft two, there was like, um, I was hearing two different voices. Can you talk a little bit about that real quick? Yeah, um, so I think like the character is sort of in this like musical, they're sort of trying to have a conversation with their grandmother, who's mm -hmm. like sort of in the process of, you know, kind of passing away. And um, they really are like having a lot of difficulty doing that because the grandmother only speaks Portuguese, granddaughter only speaks English. So they're sort of having this disconnect, mm -hmm. but they're saying like very similar things in either language. So like the Portuguese underneath that, it was sort of like to represent what the grandmother might have been saying, because that was based on uh, one of the feedbacks that I received on the first draft that was like, maybe you should incorporate, you know, like a Portuguese lyric. So I tried to sort of do that. Um, and yeah, so it's supposed to sort of show that fact that they're like essentially saying the same thing, but they're just having that disconnect because of that language barrier. But it's they're really saying the exact same thing. So well, I just think that's so rad. I love I mean, we've talked about this. I love hearing different tongues in song, you know. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to start wrapping up now, but I was, I'd love to know if you could tell us a little bit about like just your experience overall. Like, did you learn anything like, about yourself? And um, also for anybody tuning in who's curious about applying next year, do you have any advice for them? Yeah. Um, so I think something super cool about like this whole experience, which is just like, still sort of still sort of like unbelievable to me is like that you got like real feedback from people that are in, in like in the industry and like do this every day for their livelihoods and that's super amazing to sort of see that and what they have to say about you which is just like super I don't even have the words but um but yeah I think I've learned a lot about like my strengths and weaknesses when it comes to songwriting um, from those people and it can be really great I can like apply that in the future kind of know where I need to focus more of my energy on and know where you know I might be kind of okay for now so that's really cool and um, I think some advice that I might have for anyone who wants to do this next year or in the future I think it's just be totally okay with putting yourself out there I mean like it's totally fine if you don't feel super confident in what you're doing I mean just as long as you love it I think someone else will also find that passion and see that passion within it so I think just try to always be true to, you know, don't compromise anything for anyone else and just sort of show what you love and do whatever you love and people will, people will find it, I think, um, beautiful too. Oh, that's wonderful. I have nothing but a gesture for you, which is, oh, I love that. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Louisa and Tim, for such a wonderful conversation to kick off this evening. Um, next up, um, let's welcome Tabitha Moore to talk about her winning song, What Did Love Do to You? Tabitha, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, it's so good to see your face again. Where are you calling in from tonight? I'm calling from Valley Stream, New York. Okay, okay. Uh, Valley Stream, that's on Long Island, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so, okay, I hear, I have in my notes, and we talked about this, you go to two different schools. Can you um, tell me a little bit about that? Break that down for me? Yes. So my homeschool, um, South High School, uh, that's where I take my core classes. So like okay. math, science, English, all of those things. And then around 10, no, not 10, 12, I take the bus to Central High School, which is my performing arts school. And there I have my movement class and my musical theater class. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is you start at one school and then you have to eat lunch on a bus is basically what I mean. And then you, and then you go dance, is that right? Like when do you have time to, when do you have time to feed yourself? Tell me that, please. No, you're, you're very right. Um, I actually don't have a lunch period. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. How do you feel about that? It's stressful. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just sitting there trying to get through my day, but like I'm, I'm eating during class. Like, nope, I hear you. I hear you. Man. Very nice. Today. Very nice. <laughs> um, when did you start writing songs? Um, I first wrote my first song. I was in fifth grade. It was actually about a boy. Uh, 
I had such a huge crush on him and then he stopped talking to me and I didn't know why so I was like okay I guess we're not getting along the song was called we don't get along and I wrote it after seeing him outside the door and I refused to open the door for him so yeah <laughs> so you wrote a song about a boy who did something that was just completely irrational I've never heard of that before in my entire life that's amazing a boy who is doing something that defied logic <laughs> Sorry. What is uh, what is your like process like? Do you do you start with um, um you want you know why don't you just tell me what your process is like? <laughs> yeah, um, so normally a melody is what comes first, and I kind of go over to my phone, I record that little voice memo, and I kind of work with that for the rest of the day. But sometimes I might get the lyrics first if I just hear something someone says or I just come up with something and I'm like that's a bar I'll write that down and I honestly just go with whatever comes to me first and I try to work with that and I always take the advice of Olivia Rodrigo whatever I have now I finish the song and I go from there that Olivia Rodrigo just wise beyond her years I just learned something <laughs> Um, okay, so I would love to talk about your winning song, What Did Love Do to You? Can you tell me, please, what inspired it? Um, I honestly don't really know what inspired it. Like, right before I wrote the song, um, I had watched, like, a lot of Hunger Games, so maybe Katniss and Peeta kind of inspired it. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but um, <laughs> honestly, it's just about what love has done to me and anyone else who can relate to the situation. But I honestly was just messing around on my ukulele and this came to mind. Okay, so um, when you received feedback uh, for draft one of your song, can you, can you walk me through like what that feels like? Because I, for me, like whenever I'm getting feedback, especially in the, in the manner that that this occurred where like you don't necessarily know who you're talking to or or whether or not they like get you like how how does how does one go from getting words uh feedback on a page and and into in, incorporating it into your song like what how does that work talk to me so the biggest thing was that even though i didn't know who it was that was giving me feedback it was feedback you know a way to make my song better and so even if I didn't really know how to um, incorporate that into my song, I kind of went along with whatever they were saying, but also I maintained what my vision was for the song. And that's a big thing. You have a vision, go with it. Feedback is just a way to make it better. So, okay. so we're gonna um, listen to a couple of clips now. Do you wanna tell us anything about it before we do that? Um, so draft one and draft two were very different for me. <laughs> Um, in uh, draft one, originally, I had two, uh, the two characters singing simultaneously, and I kind of stripped that idea, and I just had each character singing on their own to kind of just create a more intimate setting, so. All right, let's listen to that. And only your mind in the way. They say I'm not wondering what they are. I'm not wondering when this will start. Cause love is so rare. And I'm not scared. I'm not scared of one world, one heart. Are you proposing a question you never meant to mention? Asking the Ah, oh, time to 
with that. Can you tell me, like, how has this been for you? I, I, I'm sorry, I just need a minute because your son is. Okay. How's it been overall for you? Uh, did you have you had a good time so far? Um, uh, have you have you learned something about yourself that you'd love to share with us? And uh, also, if if anybody is watching who wants to apply next year, do you have any parting advice for them? Yes, I definitely do. Um, well, first, I learned that if I put my mind to a challenge, I I know that the possibilities are endless to be quite honest, because I'd never written a musical theater piece before this contest. And, you know, here I am today. And for future applicants to the contest, uh, I would just say, don't doubt yourself and your capabilities, because that's what I was doing prior to this. I didn't believe that I could make it as far as I did. And, you know, again, now I'm here, so. Now you're here. Thank you so much, Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha and Tim, for such a great conversation. Uh, we are going to bring out our next mentor, Joey Contreras. And joining Joey for our next interview will be Isabella Wynn and Maya Johnson to talk about their winning song, Live Before Life's Gone. So let's welcome Joey, Maya, and Isabella. Hey everyone. Thanks, Amanda, for that little intro and Tim for just doing a great job interviewing everybody. Um, I also like learned so much. Olivia Rodrigo is spitting out truths and facts. I love it. Um, so uh, hi, Isabella and Maya. Um, where are you tuning in from? Uh, we're coming from Little Rock, Arkansas. Awesome. And tell, tell us, introduce yourselves to everybody. Um, so I'm Isabella Wynn. And I'm Maya Johnson, and we are juniors at Mount St. Mary Academy. Or now seniors, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yay, senior year. Oh, my goodness. Um, so when did you each start writing songs, and then when did you start working together? Um, well, so I started writing songs right before kind of COVID hit, and I really kind of turned to that as an artistic medium with which to express myself during the pandemic. Because, you know, I've been doing musical theater since I was like about eight years old um, and it's become my life and I want to go pursue it professionally. But so when the pandemic hit and everything shut down, I couldn't go perform live anymore and my creative outlet was kind of stripped away. Um, and music has always been a big part of my life. I've played piano since I was four. I've been singing since I could talk. So writing kind of became my new form of creative expression when I didn't have live theater. Um, I started writing songs in like middle school because my dad was in a band and I wanted to try it um, because I played instruments from a young age and it also sung pretty much my whole life. <laughs> um, and it became a lot more of a form of emotional expression and coping during quarantine when I really started leaning into songwriting and wrote a series of songs that was based off of different poems from like a bunch of different classmates. Um, and I had never really explored musical theater writing before we started writing together. Um, but I've listened to and watched so many musicals since I was a kid and have been in a lot of shows since high school. So I knew a lot of the basics of the style. And well, we've known each other since we were about five and happened to do the same theater and arts camp together. Um, and, you know, we'd gone in and out finding each other every now and then, but we really kind of reconnected in our freshman year. And we didn't start writing together until our sophomore year because uh, we both came up with an idea for a musical and we were like, you write songs, I write songs, we're friends, let's write a musical. I love that. I mean, so you both are, um, you know, we've talked to some some solo writers and you are the first team that we're talking to. Um, and musical theater is all about collaboration, right? So uh, tell us about your songwriting process and how that's been um, individually versus when you're, you know, sharing ideas together, baking songs together. Um, I have a lot of experience in that. I love to hear how uh, how your process has been. So um, when we originally started writing our musical that this song is from, we divided up the songs and we're like, you take these, I take these. And we wrote them separately after like talking through the vibe of the song and what it should accomplish. So I would write some and then I would go and write the others. Um, but once we got to some of like the big group numbers, we came together and we were talking about them and kind of realized 
that they were really overwhelming and neither of us kind of wanted to take them. So we're like, well, I guess that means we got to work together now. <laughs> um, so that's when we really started working together. Um, and when we work together, then I kind of become more of the lyricist. And, and I become more of the like accompanist. And we still work through all the parts together, especially in our rewriting. Uh, we come up with different lyrics and melodies together. Um, honestly, some of our most successful ways of writing together has been um, in my room with me laying on the floor with my phone out in our notes app and him sitting at our keyboard and just kind of, I was like, um, okay, you play chord progressions until we find one that we like. We found one and then we're like, okay, play that over and over and over again until we find a melody and then just play that until we came up with lyrics. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that so much. Just like looping it, putting, playing that chord on loop, that progression, and just being like trying all sorts of different top lines, trying different lyrics. Um, I love that process. Uh, so tell us about your winning song, Live Before Life's Gone, and what inspired it. And yeah, tell us all about it. Well, this song is from our original musical, Less, Less Than, Than Perfect. Perfect, which we just dropped socials for on Tuesday. So go check that out. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube at Less Than Perfect the Musical or at Less Than Perfect Musical. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> well, we started writing that about a year and a half ago. And the show was born actually while we were on a choir field trip singing for an NYU student's like final short film project as background characters. Um, and we kind of had to stand outside in the freezing cold for hours in like November in the middle of nowhere. Um, and, you know, being the nerdy theater kids we are, we were like, okay, we're bored. So let's just make backstories for our characters, which turned into the musical we're writing right now. It is based on the two of us as best friends, but if we were both in love and it is your typical high school love story, but with way more normalized queer representation. Um, and this song is the kind of prologue song for the entire show where you see the two main characters Shar and Jazz, um, based respectively off of us, for the first time interacting with each other. Um, the song sets up their relationship and kind of who they are individually before they're thrust into, you know, the rest of the show, the rest of the characters, and all of that conflict. Very, very cool. Um, st also, standing in the freezing cold for hours, I mean, where's, yep. your, where's your union rep? We needed, we needed better, better, you know, environment <laughs> um but hey you made a musical out of it so that's amazing um so what feedback did you receive on your song in draft one and then how did the song change from draft one to draft two so the two biggest pieces of feedback that we heard by far were we needed to have more interesting accompaniment which we definitely knew yes. uh, <laughs> and to make the lyrics more specific and meaningful to the story and the struggles of the characters um, we did have a lot of trouble finding the balance between going really deep into the feelings of the characters while still hiding a lot of plot since this was only the prologue song. Um, but we did have a lot of fun trying to figuring out how to do all that. And I think we figured out some cool ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, though we ended up changing quite a few of the lyrics, especially in Jazz's first verse and chorus, and then pretty much rewrote all of the lyrics in the bridge except mm -hmm. for a few pieces here and there yeah we also played around with way more detailed piano accompaniment and we added violin and drum parts using uh, logic pro yeah all of which was really fun because we were able to use callbacks to other songs that we'd already written for from the rest of the show um but it was just it was a lot of messing around in aim's basement trying random things and seeing what we liked and what stuck since neither of us actually play violin or drums. Yes, so big shout out to our friend Jackson Ray who gave us like an entire inspiration for the violin parts in our song and my dad for helping us get the recording quality to not suck. <laughs> well, um, let's listen to those changes. Instead of sun, give me a roller coaster ride. Give me the storms and strike and all things alike. Give me ups and downs Things really work in real life, but 
Instead of sun, give me a roller coaster ride. Give me storms that strike and all things alike. Give me ups and downs instead of stupid sunny skies. Give me exciting, new, and daring with the drums and music blaring. Cause I'd rather live before my life's gone. But can I write my story so it charters the unknown and live my way exactly as I please? To forge a path that's new and entirely my own. Maybe we can if we just believe. And though I'd rather slow it down. I'd rather speed it up. We'd both rather live before our lives are gone. I love it so much. I also love um, hearing the production changes between draft one and draft two. It's amazing how uh, how clean the recording got from from one and two and. Also, I'm like, hello, are we listening to the cast album basically now? Um, and other cool. things that like, I'm really responding to were just like the um, the tempo shifts too. I mean, all that stuff, uh, I understand. I, I know you worked on Logic with this and everything. And so that's a lot of just like learning how to utilize all the tools of that that software so quickly. And so I just want to applaud you for um, diving into all of that uh, so quickly. Um, sounds so good. And the vocals also sound so clean, so great. Um, so, uh, what have you both learned by participating in the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge, and, um, and how have you both grown as collaborators? Um, so, we definitely learned a lot from all this, you know, it's been like a all like year round process. Um, but we learned a lot from the repeated themes and our feedback with the accompaniment and the specific lyrics, which we're now going and applying to all of the songs that we have written um, in the first draft of our musical that we have written, like 18 songs. Um, uh, we got a lot of feedback from the workshops that we did with Rob Rikiki and you, um, <laughs> <laughs> which was one of our favorites. Um, yeah, I liked hearing what you were saying about um, bringing back uh, other motifs from other songs and kind of figuring out where that can be um, in the arrangement and the orchestrations of the prologue, which is also very smart. So you listen. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> I mean, we learned a lot from that and, you know, learning how to apply all the tips, like I said, to all the other songs with specific lyrics, better hooks, so on. Um, as far as working together as collaborators, uh, we have definitely learned how to work with each other more. <laughs> we have <laughs> very different writing styles so a big part of us writing together is making sure that your more like classic musical theater writing style and my very strange jazzy kind of alternative writing can blend together which you definitely see throughout this song and the rest of our musical mm -hmm. because it's also shown in how our lyrics work like I'm very more literal which is great for like you know high school musical theater where they're really really got a lot of beautiful imagery um, and metaphors. And so we've definitely learned how to work better and like add all those in there in a nice kind of blend way mm -hmm. um, and communicate together, especially with like, you know, the accompaniment, oh, which yeah. is the whole thing that we have been Because working. neither of us know what we're doing. No, but... not at all. <laughs> um, it's been a lot of trial and error and kind of throwing stuff out, seeing what sticks. Um, but we've gotten a lot more ideas and tools to help us with the rest of the musical and other ideas we have for future musicals that we have written out somewhere in a notes app. <laughs> I'm so excited. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Isabella and Maya, for sharing with us the power of collaboration. It's truly magical what we can create when we work together. Um, let's welcome our next winner, Owen Ye Lee, to talk about his winning song, Space Time. Hey, Owen. Hello. Um, Hello. Oh, there you are. It's so good to see you. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Owen Ye Lee. Um, my pronouns are he, him. And I'm a senior that's about to graduate at the Nueva School. And I'm calling in from Palo Alto, California. Yes, from the Bay Area. Love it. I'm originally from the Bay, so repping that. <laughs> um, when did you start writing songs? Mm -hmm. So I've actually been writing songs since I was really young. Um, my parents actually do have baby cam footage of me singing made up songs in my crib as a baby. So that's pretty funny. But I really did start to get serious about writing when I was around eight years old or eight or nine years old. 
And I wrote my first musical, which was called I Am Happy. Wow, very creative title with my younger sister when I was around eight. And then I released my first actually produced and like original song at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. And that was called New Normal. And I wrote it with my best friend. And ever since then, I've just been doing a lot more writing, producing and releasing more music. I love it. I think it's so awesome how um, proactive you've been about putting out material, generating material and releasing it. Um, I know you released an EP and, and I was listening to that a little while ago and I was just like, it was so gorgeous and, and so impressed by just the, the the musicianship and then also just the quality of your production. It's great. Um, I also love that your first musical was very optimistic. It said, I am happy. I mean, it could have been, could have been like, this sucks. I mean, you know what I mean? It could have been any, it's a very optimistic title of your first musical. Um, so uh, tell us about your songwriting process and how you approach writing a song. Mm -hmm. So I've played classical piano for most of my life, since I was four actually, um, same as Isabella, I think. And so almost all of my songs start on the piano. And I usually begin by playing some random chords, maybe like experimenting with rhythmic patterns as well. And then once I get a chord progression that I like, also like Isabella and Maya just said, I will start looping it and then improvising random melodies over it. And so that just usually looks like humming, humming things um, and just improvising on the spot until I find something that I'm happy with. And it's only after that I finish the lyrics, only after I finish the lyrics that I began writing the melody or no, other way around. Only after I finished the melody that I began writing the lyrics. Um, and the lyrics are also a lot of trial and error. And so that's also improvising and making random sounds until it starts to take shape as actual lyrics. But um, even though I do a lot of randomness in my songwriting process, I do go in with a bigger picture idea. For example, it might be something like, I want the verse to start small and then build to a really dramatic chorus, or I want the verse to have a more fast paced and choppy rhythm. So there definitely is a method behind the madness. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about your winning song, Space Time. What inspired this song? Yeah, Space Time is a part of a musical that I wrote that retells the story of Chang'e, who is the moon goddess in Chinese folklore. Her story is actually a very central part of the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is one of the biggest celebrations in East and Southeast Asia. So I'm half Chinese and half Taiwanese, and I went to a bilingual Mandarin elementary school. So we would actually discuss and celebrate this festival every year. We would make mooncakes, we would sing the traditional songs, and so in eighth grade, when I decided that I wanted to start writing a musical, Chang'e's story was at the front of my mind. I really wanted to um, share such a central part of my childhood with the rest of the world uh, in the form of music. And actually, it was pretty relevant during the pandemic, which is when I started writing it, because the story of Chang'e deals with a lot of loss and separation and isolation, um, because at the end of the story, Chang'e actually floats to the moon and is stuck there forever, separated from her family and her husband and all life on earth. And I think we were all feeling some of that isolation during the quarantine period as well. I'm sure I I, I did as well. Um, and so Space Time is the final song of that musical. And it's sung by Hoi, who is Chang'e's husband. And he sings the song to her after she floats to the moon and away from him forever. Mm. It's such a, such a beautiful idea for a, a musical. Um, so, uh, what feedback did you receive on your song for draft one and how was it receiving feedback and then uh how did the song change from draft one to draft two mm -hmm. so yeah i received a lot of great feedback i think the biggest piece a piece of feedback that i received was that i should consider taking more vocal and musical risks this really resonated with me because i had never really considered the riskiness of a song before per se and through this process, I especially realized how much a specific vocal performance and specific, um, just specific music elements can add to a musical theater song. For example, if there is a high belted note or a whispery falsetto note, those choices can really help to convey the emotion of a song. And so the section that I chose to focus on was the bridge, because that's where a lot of the energy starts to build up and build into the climax. In the... First draft, it was a little bit static um, in that the melody stayed around the same area and it didn't um, rise and fall as much. And the rhythm was also a little bit more predictable. It wasn't as dynamic. So in terms of vocal risk, I 
kind of just thought of the highest note that I could sustain as a belt. And then I rewrote the bridge so that it ended up in that high note. Um, very classical theater moment. And I, I do think this so yeah, it makes the song more exciting and it adds more melodic and emotional suspense for the audience as well. And um, what was your highest note that you could belt? <laughs> <laughs> well, the highest note I could sustain was, yeah, an E4. I am a baritone. I love it. Love it. Um, well, let's uh, hear those changes. I want to hear that E4. <laughs> Wishing on stars, I'm done Wishing on moonlight, I'm done Singing the same old song over again I'm done Searching horizons, I'm done Praying for miracles, I'm done Playing the same old games over Myself, I could ever win. I'm done wishing on stars. I'm done wishing on a moonlight. I'm done singing the same old song over again. I'm done. Wasting my time, waiting for miracles I'll never find Don't even know if you hear me, but if you do, please send a sign I'm done telling myself you could ever be mine Owen, I hate you so much for how beautiful your voice is. It's so, you have such a delicious tone. Oh, and um, and every single time I get to that, I'm, I'm done, done, that little part, I'm done, done, that little drop there. Every time that comes, I, I get so excited. It's like one of my favorite parts of the song. Um, my favorite parts as well. Yeah, yeah, it's just great, great stuff. Um, so what have you learned about yourself by participating in the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge? Mm -hmm thing I learned most about myself or just how to songwrite is how to incorporate feedback because I've never received this much or this detailed feedback on any of my songs before, especially once my original demo was already so um, produced and I thought it was the final version. I wasn't exactly thinking about what I could improve at the time. So it was definitely challenging to revise my song with the judges' comments in mind. Through the process, I think I especially learned the importance of having a second pair of eyes or in this case, four extra pair of eyes um, when songwriting, because a lot of the things that the judges suggested were actually things that I had never even considered when songwriting, like the riskiness of a vocal performance or um, lyrical continuity, which was another thing that they mentioned. So it was very eye-opening to look at my own song from another perspective and think about what I could, could improve about it. Yay. Um... Well, congratulations again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Owen and Joey. Uh, it's so wonderful taking the time to recognize how a song has grown and improved between drafts. Um, so thank you for, it's, it's really awesome to just get to experience that. And um, we are going to bring out our next mentor, Zaniba, who will be interviewing our next three winners. And let's bring out our next interviewee, Ale Fonseca, to talk about her winning song, Overthinking. Hi, everyone. Help me in welcoming Ale to our Zoom. Uh, Ale, can you introduce yourself to everyone here? Hi everyone, um, I'm Ale Fonseca, my pronouns are she, her, and I recently graduated from Miami Art Studio and I'm from Miami, Florida. Awesome, okay, so tell us, when did you start writing songs? Yeah, so um, I'm pretty sure I started writing songs about like four years 
years ago, um, I had asked my parents to get me a guitar one Christmas. And after watching a bunch of YouTube videos and like listening to a bunch of music, I started learning how to like play. And I was just kind of like figuring stuff out on my own. And I just kind of started writing songs. And um, I didn't really take songwriting seriously at first um, until like about like two years ago. And since then, I've written a full length musical, which I recently produced at my high school called Sonder. And I released a single. And now I'm going to be studying songwriting at Berkeley in the fall, which I am super, super excited for. Yay, Berkeley. <laughs> okay, so tell us about your current songwriting process. How do you approach writing a song? Yeah, so um, my songwriting process is all about like experimenting. I will start writing a song in like one of two ways. Either I'll pick up my guitar or I'll sit at my piano and just start playing like randomness until a melody sticks or I find something that I like and then just start kind of like improving like on top of it and just really going from there. Um, I, I went to a really great songwriting workshop once where this really awesome teacher told me to like never go back and edit while you're in the process of writing. So I just kind of put the idea down on paper or like I record it on my phone. And then once I figure out kind of the direction that I want to take with the song, then I'll like go back and really refine it. Um, I tend to be the kind of person that like a lyric or a melody will kind of pop into my head and then I'll record it and revisit it later. And then, you know, like sometimes I do and then sometimes it just becomes like a lost voice memo on my phone and you know, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, it's all part of the process. I think it's just really about picking and choosing which ideas you want to pursue and then seeing where the ideas take you. Wonderful. Okay, so why don't you tell us now about your award-winning song, Overthinking, and what inspired this creation? This song is very personal to me. I feel as though it's very relatable. I tend to be a massive overthinker myself. And it's funny because like overthinking is what even caused me to submit the song in the first place this is kind of like a fun fact but um I had originally submitted the different song to the songwriting challenge and then that night once I had submitted my application the anxiety like kind of kicked in and then I emailed Amanda and asked her if I could submit a different song which ended up being this one so like in hindsight I'm very grateful that I overthought this but um but yeah so this song just kind of started as kind of like another idea in my head. Um, I had started playing around and like experimenting with this chord progression that follows like most of the song. And then um, the chorus, like the lyrics just started as like, again, another like improvisation. And then from there, it just kind of like folded out like this whole picture. Um, I had always heard like different like characters and different people singing different parts. And then once I had like established that, then I just started like going off of the story. And it also helps since this was part of a, like a bigger show that I've already written. And so finding like character intention and like how it fit into the story, it was all kind of part of the process, I think. Incredible. Okay, so what in the competition, what was the feedback that they gave you on draft one? And how would you say that it changed the way that you did your edits. Yeah, so um, on my draft one, I was I was very fortunate that I received very generous feedback. Um, a lot of it was mostly talking about like the specificity of like the lyrics and the actual story of the song. I think sometimes when I write for musical theater, at least me personally, I forget to like tie it into the whole like storytelling aspect and just like thinking about how it really just like affects like a storyline and all the things and so really going back and finding that specificity I think is what really made it easier for the listener and it just made the song kind of it's it was just easier to understand I feel and so that specificity is what really made that difference in my draft too. Okay so let's listen to a little cut of your first draft. <laughs> Newsflash, it ain't cool being left in the rain You said you'd call, but then nothing's the same I take it back, I know I mean nothing to you I thought you'd changed, I guess I'm the fool
Okay, great. And then now we're going to listen to a snippet of the second draft of that same song. It's not intentional. I only think when I'm alone. I'm not an asshole. I don't know when to go. I sound like an arrogant idiot, hypocrite, afraid of being present. I get in my head, I don't know how to help it. Am I overthinking? Am I overthinking? Awesome. So cool. Writing is definitely rewriting. So <laughs> I love that they included that in this challenge. Um, so, <laughs> so in this process, what have you learned about yourself so far? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've learned so much already. I think, um, I've I've definitely like learned a lot of things about myself and kind of like my writing process and so again that feedback really just like helped me like establish all these things and I think the process so far has given me a lot to like reevaluate and like rethink when it comes to my writing. I think um again the difference between writing a song and writing a song for musical theater is really honing in on how you can move the plot forward and through the series of like workshops I've been able to do through the songwriting challenge I've again, received really awesome feedback and just a lot of things to consider when approaching my writing in the future and hearing another perspective sometimes and like a professional opinion really, really helped guide me in ways that I can improve and things to look out for when I continue working on new stuff. So yeah. Incredible. Thank you so much, Ale, and congratulations. Thank you, Ale and Zaniva. As an overthinker myself, I'm very grateful that your overthinking turned into such beautiful art. Uh, joining Zaniva for our next conversation is Sydney Gray to talk about her winning song, Little Miss Heard But Not Seen. So welcome, Sydney. Hi, Sydney. Welcome to the chat. Please introduce yourself to everyone. Yes, um, my name's Sydney Gray. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I have I'm joining the call from Lillian, Alabama. I'm now a senior at Fairhope High School um, in Fairhope, Alabama. Awesome. Um, so why don't you, let's just get right into it. Tell us what inspired you to start writing songs. So I've been writing since I could like structure sentences. It's always been a passion of mine. Um, I absolutely love music. I was uh, taking piano lessons and you know, my love for music just kind of happened naturally. I think it came from my parents who were both in the music industry. Um, but I started writing songs when I was 10 and I began writing, mu uh, writing musicals when I was 13. Okay, that's so cool. And tell us, what is your like songwriting process right now? How do you approach a song or how do you start with a piece of inspiration? So I typically approach the lyrics before the music itself. I'll get a lyric idea or like a theme of a song and I'll build from there. Um, once I get the idea of the tone of the song, because of how my brain associates pitch, I'll choose a key and uh, write the accompaniment from there based on the kind of vibe I get from the song. Okay, and what about your award-winning song, Little Miss Heard But Not Seen? What inspired that? Did that kind of go down in the way that you described? Um, so I was actually at a uh, theater workshop in New York City when the bridge came to me and it was like the, um, when their voice in your head is louder than your own. Um, and I wrote it down in my notes app and I took it back to Fairhope with me. And uh, when I got back, I sat down on the piano and kind of played it out, wrote out the bridge. Um, and that bridge just kind of sat there with no song really to go with it mm -hmm. until I got the idea of the character who sings it, Nava Lee, um, who is a, uh, she's a struggling high school student who's not only struggling with mental health issues, but is neurodivergent and, um, which makes navigating the teen years, uh, even more complicated. Um, 
And so this song is the introduction to Novali, who is the main character of my uh, musical, Anavali. Um, it's her first song in the musical before she decides to take action and change herself from being this kind of invisible person who hides behind her rule set, her mantra of heard but not seen, um, to somebody who grows and tries to put herself past that. Okay, awesome. And and what feedback did you get on the first draft of your song? And what changes did you make between your first draft and your revision? So the feedback I got on draft one, it was extremely insightful to like how my song came across to the listeners. Um, it showed me where my knowledge of Novelty's character got in the way of writing the song in a way that showed the listeners what I already knew, if that makes sense. Um, and one of the pieces of feedback that showed me this was one of the reviewers asking me, oh, what does heard but not seen mean? Um, and I use this to further develop Natalie's character and show how she thinks through her thoughts and actions and what heard but not seen really does mean to her. Okay, and so, and what did you do, what changes did you make specifically to address that feedback? So I rewrote the second half of verse two to really begin kind of spelling out what Little Miss Heard But Not Seen means. Um, and instead of repeating the chorus like I did in draft one, um, I also decided to make a new second chorus that it, uh, expanded upon that idea even more. Okay, awesome. So let's listen to those changes first from draft one and then from draft two. So every day since fourth grade, I've hid behind my hair and kept thoughts inside of my head. At home, they don't know about the public school bathroom and how every day since fourth grade, I've wondered if I'm better off dead. Raised my hand in class, never called on. Friends don't know I've walked past till I'm long gone. At home, it's absurd when I utter a word. I'm screamed at and told I am wrong. I'm everything they never want you to be. Little Miss Herb, not seen. Since fourth grade, I've adopted a system, a crutch for this social disease. Speak your mind, don't run your mouth, dim your light, don't blow it out. Hide enough that you're heard but not seen. Save my breath and wait till they're all gone. Hold my thoughts inside, share the small ones, and dreams are okay just so long as they stay in the space between my head and my pillow is this really all that i ever will be little miss herb not seen love it so catchy okay so you also made another change right which was to the bridge you added harmonies can you tell us about that so yeah, one uh, another item of feedback that I got was to have other voices and characters come in to demonstrate her invisibility. Um, but instead, I decided to incorporate others' voices as like they were taking up space in her head and her frustration with them. Um, when I first like heard the harmonies and parts in my head, um, I used an app on my phone called Band Lab that allowed me to record multiple uh, vocal tracks over each other. And uh, once I figured those out, I was able to uh, re-record uh, re -record them to my DAW for the uh, demo on the bridge. And here's what that sounds like. When their voice in your head is louder than Awesome. Okay. 
fabulous work. I know you did it a few weeks ago, maybe months ago, but fabulous work. Um, so what have you learned about yourself so far by participating in the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge? So this challenge has showed me a lot more about my own thought process and being intentional about laying out the characters in a process that kind of works with how my brain works. Um, I've also learned how to manage my desire for keeping originality, uh, the originality of my idea and my original draft versus letting go and making good use of some of the feedback to allow the song to grow more. That's incredible. Congratulations, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Sydney. Uh, let's bring out our final winner of the evening who uh, came here actually straight from playing a gig. So we did pre-record her interview just in case she couldn't join us, but she is here with us now. Uh, so let's bring out Gwendolyn Dorfler to talk about her winning song, The Cost. Hi, Gwen. Welcome to the Zoom. You're booked and blessed. You're already a working professional, which is so <laughs> impressive. Please introduce yourself to everyone. Hey, guys. I'm so sorry for my appearance and my background. I just came from a gig with my band, uh, but I'm Gwendolyn Dorfler. I go by she, her pronouns. I'm a, jun a junior at DeWitt High School, and I'm coming from DeWitt, Michigan. Awesome. So what inspired you to start writing songs and was there a particular moment or an artist that, that made you want to become a songwriter? Yeah, I've, I've kind of been around uh, music my whole life, but there was really one moment that kind of hooked me forever, I guess. Um, There's an artist by the name of Tina Diko. She's a Danish singer-songwriter, and me and my dad used to listen to her all the time when I was growing up. I'm so sorry, I'm out on the street right now. <laughs> um, But we used to listen to her all the time, and this one day... We were listening to a song in the car, and I just remember saying, I really, really like this song. My dad was like, well, what do you like about it? I was like, well, I don't know. And he's like, no, tell me what you like about it. And so he played the song back probably 10, 20 times. And each time I tried to listen for something different, and I just couldn't put my finger on why I liked it. I'm like, I don't know. And then my dad starts the song over again. He goes, pay attention to how she starts each line and how she takes each breath on how each phrase bleeds into the next one. And it was just such an eye-opening moment of like how intricate and complex something can be that I just appreciated at its simplicity. And that really kind of just gave me a whole other kind of appreciation for songwriters and people who write songs and just music in general. I love that story. Um, so tell us now, like, where are you at in your current songwriting process? How do you start working on a song? I tend to write songs in chunks. So a lot of times I'll have like a word or a phrase or something that I think, like a concept that I think would be cool to build a song around. Um, and then usually I work backwards. So in the best case scenario, it starts with the chorus and I just get to fill in the verses. Um, and worst case scenario, it starts with a verse and then I have to figure out how to hook it and how to make it interesting. Um, but from there I go back through and I revise the music that's kind of served as filler music to make sure that everything fits the same, um, story that's going on in my head. But from the starting point, it's kind of about creating a cohesive universal experience without making it seem like you're creating a cohesive universal experience. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Now, why don't you tell us all about your award-winning song, The Cost, and what inspired this song? How did it get started? Yeah, I started The Cost with no intention of it being a musical theater song. At the end of every year uh, at my school, our choir teacher has us do these musicianship projects. Uh, and one year I was, I decided that I wanted to write a song. And I went to talk to the guitar teacher about using a guitar during that time of the day. And he told me no. So I was forced to write the cost, this song on piano. And I was just thinking about how all of the seniors had left and how everybody was moving on with their lives in the future and just kind of what that was going to look like for me. So it kind of started out with like, just trying to figure out what I was going to do. And also to what extent I really wanted this dream to happen. Um, and from there, it just kind of evolved into a letter encouraging people who have dreams to chase and kind of unorthodox things that they want to do in their lives. But 
that's how the cost started. Okay. And then what, 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 what was the feedback that you were given in the challenge and how did the song change when you implemented that feedback? Yeah. So I got a few points of feedback about building the world of the cost, uh, especially zeroing in on my character who I named her Suzanne. Um, it led to a couple different lyric changes. I realized that I was trying to make a world and I needed to focus on one person. Um, so I kind of had to shift the song from being just a generalization to about a specific moment, I guess. Um, so that led to a couple of lyric changes. And then um, I also got some feedback saying um, they wanted to hear something risky happen with the music. So I went back through and I listened and I added French horns. It's like right at the start of the bridge and it really just builds the momentum of the song. Um, and then my last piece of feedback that I received was uh, making the end of each chorus a question rather than a statement. And I really just loved exploring that dimension of my character. It just, it gave her a whole journey from wariness to self-doubt to finally just realization that it doesn't matter how she feels about it she has to do it and yeah so that was the feedback that I received and I think it's really altered the song that I made but it's still every bit that I wanted it to be it's funny how even a tiny piece of punctuation can make all the difference. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's listen back to back to the two drafts of your song. How does that glow of attention be like something you earned? something you deserve I don't know I won't know but I want to Awesome. So what have you learned about yourself um, so far in participating in this challenge and being one of the winners? Honestly, the day that I got the call that my song was chosen was one of the most surreal moments that I've ever had. Um, I've known for a while now that I wanted to be a songwriter, but it's one thing to write songs and it's another thing to be recognized for songs. And it just it was so encouraging and there's, I got such great feedback that I was really able to implement. Um, the musical theater songwriting challenge has just helped me become a lot more confident in both what I want to do and my writing capabilities and really just broadened the scape of what I like to write and what I want to write. Um, a good song is a good song and this competition really helped me realize just how true that is. That's incredible. Congratulations, Gwen. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Gwen and Zaniva, for joining us tonight. And there you have it, folks, our winning songwriters of the 2023-2024 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge for High School Students. We have a couple more announcements before we close out our program this evening. This has all been so inspiring. I hope everybody's been enjoying at home. Um, and now that you've heard all about the winners and how they wrote their winning songs, we want to make sure that you join us in person or on the live stream. The concert is Monday, June 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern for Challenge Accepted to hear all of these songs performed live by Broadway artists with a full band. Um, so you can tune in for the live stream at namped.org slash challenge and arts.gov slash songwriting. If you'd like to attend in person, 
please send an email to challenge at nant.org. All right, and we want to take a moment to give a shout out to uh, the 15 songs and their songwriters who are finalists this year uh, for the Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge for high school students. Congratulations to all of the finalists. They are listed here on your screen uh, from all over the country, really. Some really fantastic work across the board. Uh, we cannot wait to see what happens next for you. Thank you so much for submitting this year. The feedback team was so impressed by all of the songs they listened to this year. So they wanted to um, give honorable mentions to songs across the five elements of songwriting. So you can find those songs and songwriters on the screen here. We want to say congratulations, great work, and we're really hoping that you'll all submit again. Wonderful work, everyone, and we can't wait to see what you submit for next year's Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge. We are thrilled to mention that the Songwriting Challenge has been renewed for season two, so please stay, stay tuned for more information. We'll announce when submissions for draft one will open at the concert on June 17th, so make sure you are signed up for that live stream. For more information about Songwriting Challenge, sign up at namp.org slash get dash connected and stay updated for summer song share and when submissions go live. Thanks everyone for joining us and have a great rest of your night.